please welcome the one and only Roy Wood Jr. Well, hello, 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 hello. Yes. 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 Oh. Look at these people. <laughs> All the, the colors and. Look at that response you've gotten. Man. It's so vibrant today. So I vibrant. like this. I have to tell you, okay, confession. Okay. Out, other than Eddie Murphy, who is my absolute favorite, you are my favorite comedian. Easily. <laughs> Easily. We've Thank never you. met in person. This is our first time meeting, but I cyber stalk you on social <laughs> media. And it's like one of the first accounts I look at in the morning is your social media, just to see what you're gonna say. I'm sorry, it's chaos. Uh, it did. <laughs> so, you know what's wild though is that when I'm on Twitter, it, considering what I do at The Daily Show, I completely avoid politics as much as I can on Twitter. Because yeah. I'm like, that, I do those arguments enough at work. <laughs> Let's argue about sports and food. Right. Like, that's my thing. And now, how do you argue about food? Because people get serious about food because food takes you back to a time or it connects you to a person or an event. So it's not the food you're defending. You're defending the moment mm -hmm. that that food connects to. And so I got on Twitter and I said that breadcrumbs don't belong in macaroni. And apparently... <laughs> and they don't. <laughs> they don't. And... I don't know who this person, what they was going through. I don't know if they dead grandmama used to sprinkle breadcrumbs on their macaroni before they go to sleep every night, but this person was on my behind for two hours I straight. I saw it, I saw it. Over rich crackers. It was rich crackers, it wasn't even real breadcrumbs. This is who put rich crackers? So, <laughs> I mean. But I'm but happy to be here, I'm I, fine. I felt that I was in the middle of that Twitter beef because I, there is a recipe that I follow from a very famous chef that I love so much, and she does put bread crumbs in the macaroni and cheese. And I'm black and Southern. I know. That's fine, know. That's, fine. Know. that's fine. Just tell me no truffle. You ain't put no truffle <laughs> no in truffles. it, though. Okay, no, then we finish. And, we I, friends and I grew up on Kraft macaroni and cheese. It has no bread crumbs. And yes. it's a delicious classic. People will get upset. Um, it, it's just one of those things where you have to watch what you say yeah. on the internet. Because people, because I learned, I learned 10, 15 years ago when I was doing morning radio, um, we used to do prank phone calls or whatever, yeah. right? And so one of the people I prank called showed up at my show to fight. Oh. And I'm like, I don't know if you understand, but the word prank establishes <laughs> I don't want to fight. Like, I. <laughs> Here to just have a good time, sir. Right. But the man, once I understood that people are crazy enough to buy a ticket, get a two drink minimum, sit patiently, watch you do comedy for an hour, then try to fight you at the merch table after. <laughs> you need to watch what you say. You need to watch what you say. Well, I was thinking about you because we often use humor to diffuse situations. When you were a kid, was it your weapon to get you out of trouble with your parents or if you were in a situation where somebody wanted to confront you on the schoolyard? Were you the funny kid that got out of it? Yeah, that was, that was my tool. I wasn't in the same school district for more than two years until high school. Really? So I was, it was always a game of hopscotch, just all, in the same city, right. but just different programs different and yeah. you know, advanced whatever. So it, humor was always the tool to try and like get out of something. I remember one time, um, it was in the eighth grade, I got in a fight at a Stop the Violence rally. You got in a fight at the Stop the Violence rally. <laughs> Who gets again. into a fight at the Stop the Violence rally? I figured that would be the best place to start the fight. Because, oh, <laughs> because I figured I could get first lick, then somebody would come in and break it up and go, hey, stop the violence. Oh. <laughs> and that's a win. That's a win. Like, you know, you're like, hey, stop the violence. Like, you know, you some and, and the story at the lunch table would be, man, Roy, hit that man in the face. <laughs> so I punch Mario Brown in the face. Oh, gosh. And then I'm patiently waiting for people to come and stop the violence. And no one comes. <laughs> and then I hear, like, like, just in the distance, I hear somebody go, get him, Mario. Oh. And Mario got me. <laughs> and, the whole time I'm losing this fight, I'm looking up at people. And I just said, this ain't what Dr. King wanted. <laughs> and Mario started laughing. Oh, 
and you got him. And we've been cool ever since. You know, one white ally that goes unsung, in my opinion, is evil white actors in civil rights movies. <laughs> These are unsung heroes of the movement. We got this clip from comedian and Daily Show correspondent Roy Wood Jr. Um, listen, that we that's all we could play of this clip. Yeah, that's, <laughs> you were, I saw your heart racing. You're like, is Tamron Hall really gonna play that whole clip? The basic idea is that to show black pain, to tell our history the right way, you have to show our pain and our struggle which means you need a white guy actor on camera being the pain right. and the struggle. Yes. And so that's the argument that I'm Could trying to Could you reference make. Leo DiCaprio in Django Unchained where he yeah. had to use some language we yeah. cannot say here, and you're in like... In front of Samuel L. Jackson. Which is... And that is that's an unsung bravery. hero. That is bravery. That's bravery. I want to get your take before we look at some of the TAN fam. Uh, Dave Chappelle. Um, it's been now... It's, it is, it's, it's an interesting situation. So Dave Chappelle has Week a special three closer. Of the Chappelle saga. I, well, it's not going anywhere. And he's talked about it and he keeps talking about it as well. Um, if you don't know, Dave Chappelle had his latest special closer and it has created a, quite a turmoil. I, I shouldn't say that. It is a continuation of where is the line with comedy? Or is there a line or should there be a line? And I read your comment. You said he has a right to say what he wants and they have a right to be upset. And I thought that was a very wise answer. But is that how you really feel? Yeah, I think that we have confused, and I, I say we, I'm talking about comedians mm -hmm. as, as a whole. I can't speak for Mr. Chappelle right. specifically. Yeah. But the comedians that I talk to, I think that we've confused the line of people having a right to have an opinion yeah. with being canceled and getting rid of you. And you go, no, I didn't like that joke. Right. That's been going on for years. Right. I was on the Apollo, I got canceled. They booed. Right. <laughs> and they said, right. get off the stage. Right, that used to be the cancel. Yeah, you get the Sandman and pull you right there. That was the original tweet. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> so, if people have a line of what they don't want to yeah. hear and what they don't want to rock with, they have absolutely every opportunity and freedom, the same as a comedian, to right. say exactly how they feel. Yeah. And I don't, and I hope that that's not misconstrued as being sensitive or you're trying to cancel me. They're like, no, I just don't... I used to be okay with them type of jokes as a society, and now uh, we're not. I like your answer. I like that uh, a lot. It just is what it is. Yeah. You know what? You, you are... You are uniquely talented because you occupy this world of journalism while being a comedian. Even the greatest, Richard Pryor, didn't occupy that space. He had a variety show, he had a TV show, but you have this journalism side of you that I think it, it's, it makes you remarkable. So now we have some of these questions from our, our viewers, and our goal today was to help make them laugh. Our TAMP fam has sent us these problems, and they're looking to find humor. Here's Maria, a mother of three. Take a look. Okay. My name is Maria. I'm a mother of three lovely kids. Please... Help me find laughter and joy in the fact that every time I try to spend time with my partner, there's always a child around. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How do you laugh when you've got <laughs> three little, little ones that clearly run the house? Ooh, I would say the easiest thing to do, and I can only speak from my house, but me and my partner, Salona, and our child, Henry, and there's only one child. I know one ain't three. <laughs> But if you can find something that the three of you all can watch together, yeah, then it helps the kids kind of laugh and the kids feel like they've had their time. And then you go, all right, yeah. get out of here. In our home around. right now, it's Blippy. I don't know if you know who Blippy oh, is. Blippi. Oh, Blippy. Yeah, we went through the Blippy years. It's a YouTube show that, at like, my son is like, ah! I'm like, really? And yeah. I just go, and he's like, B-I-L-L, -L, it spells it and everything. Yeah, it's it's completely engaging, active material. We, we've moved on past Blippy. I've watched the Paw Patrol movie 27 times. <laughs> <laughs> and we also watched The Floor is Lava on Netflix. I haven't my, seen that my yet. Boy loves, my okay. boy loves volcanoes. Yeah. And we watched The Floor is Lava for the, the first season that. he thought it was real lava. So bonding like, no. together over family humor. Yeah. But, we, but the kids can't watch your special, but I, I can watch it a thousand yes. times. It is excellent. Emma from Chicago sent us this question on Facebook. I'm a recent college grad, and despite what you hear about the job market, it's been impossible landing an entry-level job. How do I keep my spirits up when I'm on the hunt? 
and it drags on. Uh, I think that, you know, for Emma, the main thing to do is to find other people that are on the climb with you. Oh. And I think that for as long as you have a strong circle, you'll always have a support system. You're like the most <laughs> touching person. You just need friends. I just told her to get some good you friends. You just said get some friends. Get some good friends. I mean, I, you are... <laughs> Your journey is so unique, and your sensitivity, I think, is what people really hone in on. Did you always know you had it? Like, even when you were getting the booze at the Apollo, did you know you had it? I felt like I had some sort of an ability to translate what was going on. You know, I did mornings in, you know, shout out to the crib, Birmingham, Alabama. And in doing morning radio, you have to be able to, you know this, yeah. it, you have to distill down yeah. the most complicated stories to the quickest, simplest way for somebody that's in the car for five to six minutes. And so having kind of that skill set, I think radio helped give me that ability, you know, later on. The funniest comedian of all time is... <laughs> you gotta give me alive and dead. You gotta give me no, alive No, I don't, dead. no, no, no. All right, Chris Rock. Chris Rock. Chris Rock. Okay. Chris Rock. If I could only watch one for the rest of my life. Only watch one the rest of your life is Chris Rock. It's Chris Rock and... Why do you say that? Chris Rock can take the complicated thing and boil it down, and he's also not afraid to turn the mirror back on himself. That's why his last special, Tambourine, was beautiful, because yeah. half of the whole special, he's talking about himself, and that's something he'd never done before. And the best performers evolve. You have to molt, and you have to creatively come into something different Right. You know, every 10 to 15 years, and he's consistently done that. Well, my current favorite is sitting right across from me. I just adore you so much. Thank you, Roy Jr.